Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Motorcycle Rewind and today we have something special. The end of the year for 2023. We're going to give out some awards, we're going to give you some updates on the channel, and most of all we're going to say a huge thank you. Stay with us. Twenty twenty three was an amazing year. We put out over a hundred and fifty videos. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you what you talking about? What you talking about? That's not counting shorts or lives. In those hundred and fifty videos, thirty nine different motorcycles. Just take a moment on that, just for a second. Thirty nine different vintage motorcycles were featured on the channel, which is incredible. I'm just a guy in his garage that's really interested in these old motorcycles and really passionate about bringing them back and putting them back on the road. To have 39 different motorcycles featured on the channel, and uh, that's pretty insane. Each thing that happened to us this year is we hit the 1,000 subscriber milestone, and that happened on March 2nd. It's right around our one year anniversary. It took us a year to hit 1,000, which was insane because as we sit right now, December 30th, we are at 7,658, 59 video uh, subscribers right now. I started this channel uh, two years ago for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, Carrie, my wife, was telling me, you're in there talking to yourself, so you might as well record it. Second, a really good friend of mine, Yoda, I called him Yoda, his name was Howard Doris, had passed away, and he was the guy that, he was the motorcycle guy I hung out with, old guy that knew everything about everything. Had just recently passed away, and about the same time our grandson was born the fuel that kind of started the fire to say, okay, let's do this. Because when Howard passed away, we lost his stories, unless somebody tells them. Some of my favorite moments, and I'm going to share this with you right now, are when Howard gets mentioned in the comment. People around the world that have never met him before are, are impacted by him just because I share his stories. So to me, that's him living on. We started this channel, one, to, to share our passion for these old motorcycles, but a big, huge reason was for our newly born grandson, Jackson, that had, I never had a grandfather that uh, told me how to do things. And I didn't have that go hang out with pops in the garage and learn how to do stuff. So I didn't know what that was like. And I get to see through his eyes what it's like. And so I, I've got some of these moments jotted down and I'll share the videos as I go through them. But when he was drilling my head in the driveway when I'm trying to put a fender on and <laughs> it, you know I'm out here recording the video and he's wandering around doing whatever he's doing and he's got his toy drill and just going at my head and my favorite moment of that clip is when he decided to put his safety goggles on because he knew there might be some blood and guts if he actually got penetration so that one amazing the next moment that, that kind of sits with me, and I, these are kind of moments I get goosebumps when I think about it. I'm riding to Colorado. For those of you guys, it's not, it's not by chance that I'm happy to be sitting in front of the 1983 Kawasaki GPZ 1100, but I had never ridden a motorcycle cross country. I had never, the furthest I'd ridden a motorcycle was 250 miles in one day. Um, but that morning when I got up and left and rode out, took a left in, on our main road in our neighborhood, and I was, I was not even a hundred yards away from my house. And I, I broke down, just got it really emotional because I went from I'm going to do something to I'm doing something. I get goosebumps when I think about it because how many times do we put things in the way of the things we want to do? Yeah, I was grossly underprepared to ride this motorcycle cross country. The motorcycle itself grossly underprepared to be ridden cross country. It had been abandoned for 10 plus years, stored outside without spark plugs. It was horrible. It was a horrible idea. But that morning, I just committed to doing it. And the moment I left the house, I didn't have to make it to Colorado. I just had to leave. The next moment, kind of near and dear to me, is uh, Jackson and I working on the... 1981 Honda Twin Star, little 200T, right? Nothing of a motorcycle. It was free, it was given to me, and we're working on it together, and there's this one moment in the video where I'm helping him, and he puts my hand, his hand on mine to kind of move it out of the way because he wants to do it. And that's all we want, right? Right, them to get passionate about what we're passionate about it, and passionate enough to where they want to do it. 
That to me, I'm winning. And just another side note on that for the reason why we started the channel and kind of a really great byproduct is because there's so many videos up, Jackson loves Pops TV. They call me Pops and Pops TV is when he gets to watch me on TV and he can watch other and he loves watching Jackson and Pops on Pops TV. I'm winning. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if anybody watches these videos as long as this four-year-old kid is watching them. I'm crushing it. So the last moment before we get into our awards is the welcome to Colorado sign. That, that moment to me, again, I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. It, it, it. it symbolized so much that me and this big red machine back behind me made it through such a journey. We were only halfway there. We still had to make our way back. But that moment just, it just was so, it, I, I, I can't even put it into words what, what it meant to, to me to do that, set them to do something, I'm doing it and getting there was through the roof. So that to me, kind of one of those moments that I look back on 2023 and can say, oh yeah, by the way, we did that. So the next, uh, this is, I called it the WTF moment category, right? Which one is like, you're, you're like WTF on that, right? What happened? What is that about? The first one and obvious one, the oil, first oil change on this guy. Let's dump the oil from the bottom end and let's see what that looks like. I was right, there's water in the bottom end. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's all water, look. Okay, how long before we get some oil? It's still coming out. That's two quarts so far of water. That's three plus. Is there some oil in here? Does this thing have a radiator? Oh, maybe it does. This is the radiator. Maybe this is the radiator. Is that the radiator? No, there's not a radiator. That's an oil cooler. Do we have any? I'm gonna need a bigger bucket. I'm definitely gonna need a bigger boat. Holy crap. Come on, it's gotta stop at some point. How big is this case? I'm, I'm gonna need a bigger boat. I seriously, that is an oil cooler. Okay, I've gotta stop this because I, I, my, my bucket is full. That's ridiculous. Let me go get another one. Guys, this is bananas. Look at this. I don't know how big this bucket is how much it holds. This is how much water came out of the case. It was just like, we, the entire first drain pan was full of water. I was staring up at the, the oil cooler thinking it's a radiator because the volume of water that came out of it was just, the second one was losing the oil cap. We lost the oil filler cap. Let's see what we can do. It just happened. Okay, let's see what we can do. The craziest thing about that moment is I forgot I was recording. I Because I would turn my chest cam on, on and off while I was riding just because it was the same thing over and over again. To have that whole incident being recorded in my interaction with overcoming this challenge in my head and talking through it and being able to work my way through it was just one of those things. I was happy it was recorded. The third one just happened recently. The 24 hour build on the CB350. One of the very first things I do is I'm planning on, yeah, let me drain the oil before I pull the engine out. And you find a washer and chunks of 
what we soon discovered piston. Oh, let's see what this is. Oh, what is that? That doesn't go down there. It, this, it's got a bunch of chunks in here. I mean, I find that eight minutes into the into this this 24 hours, and it was just that was like really, we could have used some better luck. The first annual Motorcycle Rewind Awards, and the award this year, first start. The nominees are the 1983 Kawasaki GPZ 1100. The second nominee is the 1975 Moto Guzzi 850T. Again, we rebuilt the carburetors last time. Okay guys, here we go. We've got fuel in it. I gotta hook up the, our makeshift jumper wire here. And now we're gonna push the start button. We don't want to run it too long, so I haven't checked the oil or anything. But it's alive! Yes! And guys, the award for best start goes to the 1983 Kawasaki GPZ 1100. Guys, this guy should not be doing anything that it's doing. It is ridiculous. Okay, so the next award goes to, and, and I guess I should show you, we do have, anytime there are people involved, we do have an award. We do have a, a crudely welded spark plug motorcycle. And I say crudely, it's got a couple of nuts and uh, a used spark plug and some wire that I made the handlebars out of. They get a patch, they get a handful of motorcycle rewind stickers, and my undying appreciation for them. And this category is best guest appearance. BJ from Brickhouse Builds on our, on the two videos, three videos, maybe five, 10 videos that he was on for uh, the GPZ. You want to do the honors and hit the, the, I'll hit the key, you hit the button. Do we need the hot starter? Yeah, or? we can, high, fast idle, we'll do it just for fun. The second nominee for best guest appearance goes to Tommy from Sweden, from Sweden. I had kind of the same problem when I first thought my bike is. They have something in Sweden called V-Power. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have it over there. Yeah, yeah. Viking Power. And the award for best guest appearance goes to Tommy from Sweden. When I was on the, on the ride to Colorado, we posted a video every day. So everything I recorded the day before, I would edit that night, I'd put up, and it went up at 12 o'clock the next day. So thankfully, Tommy from Sweden was following this journey. And the video went up the, from the day before, again, five hour time difference. And we're stuck trying to figure out what it is on the second day at BJ's house um, in his garage, trying to sort this thing through. And I get an email. While I'm reading the first email, I get another email from Tommy. And before I even get through the first one, I get a third email from him. And I'm like, all I responded was, can you talk? And he said, yeah, if you can do it right now, because it's 10 o'clock for him. And sure enough, we get on a Google Meetup and 
we solve the DFI solution. And he told us, walked us through how to do it, sent detailed instructions, and then we got it sorted. I was on the road three hours later, back on the road. I mean, that to me is, is astounding, the, the power of, of this platform, and not for me, but for the community to be able to, to connect with people and somebody to reach out. And I don't have all the answers. I don't have, I have a fraction of the answers, but I know that this connects me to people that do. And that to me is what I love about uh, this and everything that we're building here, which is super amazing. So the award goes to Tommy. So Tommy, I will be in touch with you. You will get one of these crudely welded, just amazing motorcycle spark plug, uh, spark plug motorcycles and my undying appreciation for you helping out on this because without you who knows where we'd be and last but not least we have the Howard Doris Yoda award right Howard was my friend my old friend that I hung out with motorcycles who passed away we talked about him earlier and uh, the award that we're doing for him, we're going to do one every year with, with the channels. And these are going to go to, to people or our persons that kind of impacted us throughout this, uh, kind of the spirit of who he was and uh, who he would have loved hanging out with. This Howard Yoda Doris Award, and again, you're, you're going to get a crudely welded spark plug motorcycle, uh, patch, handful of stickers, and my undying uh, appreciation. The Howard Yoda Doris Award goes to BJ from Brickhouse Builds. And guys, I, I say this and I know I, I think I've celebrated before on the channel, but for him to take, for, for me to ride this motorcycle to Colorado, for him to support me on that ride so much so, drove an hour and a half to a oh, hundred miles to come pick me up to drive a hundred miles back to then work on the motorcycle to to get help me get back on the road was uh, was through the roof guys I can't say it enough because I was sitting on the side of the road because that to me I don't know if you guys are in this same situation it's hard to ask for help it's hard to, hard to put people out when you're asking for help. It's easy, it's easier to ask for help when it's right there. Hey, you wanna pick that up for me when you're right there. But hey, do you wanna drive 100 miles to come pick me up? That's a big ask. And, and hold on, I'd never met him in person before. We'd talked on the phone, we've talked via lives and on Instagram and on YouTube and we had uh, just chatted back and forth via messages, things like that, but never met shook hands, say, hey, how you doing? Right, never any of that stuff. And I, would, I remember being on the side of the road at the gas station, and the struggle was, do I ask for help? I mean, that truly was the struggle because it wasn't about, I, I, it, it was not whether, it, if I ask him to come pick me up, will he do it? But do I wanna ask him to come pick me up because that's gonna put him out? And, and that was huge for me. I mean, I was really sitting on the side of the road at that gas station. I was there for hours before I called the tow truck. Because, because of that, right? I didn't, we, we, we go through this whole thing of asking for help, you know, am I willing to do it? Am I, but it, we see it as a, a sign of weakness, but I'm also not giving that person on the other side the opportunity to help. To, to be, to, to live in that moment, right? To, to, to be their charitable self. We don't allow them to do it by just not asking. And I struggled with that on the side of the road, man. I, I did. And I, 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 I was thinking about, okay, I could rent a U-Haul and I'd already looked up U-Haul places. I could look up, I'd already looked up things. I had solutions that I could bail out on. I already had them. I, I went through, and I was struggling with, do I call, do I call? And that was one of the calls I made to Carrie, and she was like, look, you'll figure it out. And she wasn't, she wasn't like, pack it in, you can go. And then I made the call to BJ. That was a huge thing for me. But him being willing to show up, drop everything. I'm eternally grateful for what was willing to do, and that's why I'm so happy to give the first annual Howard Yoda Doris Award to BJ 
for brick house builds. So guys, there you have it. Our first annual Motorcycle Rewind Year in Review Awards. I don't know. We're still, it's still a working title. If you guys have 12 better, come on, send them out to me. Uh, that this year was amazing. So what do we have planned for 2024? That's where the fun is. Uh, I will tell you this, that we will probably do more than 150 videos. We'll probably do more than that. Uh, I, I like that number. I'd like the number to be a little bit higher. I enjoy the process of doing lots of uh, videos. It keeps me, keeps me accountable, keeps me in a kind of a groove. It makes it easier for me. If I'm doing one a week, it's a little harder for me to do. If I'm doing a couple of weeks, I kind of stay in a groove and it, it works a little bit easier. Uh, you guys let me know, how often would you like to see content? And we've got great things planned for 2024. There will be some epic long rides that we're gonna be on. We're not done with this guy yet. There will be some other motorcycles that we take on some long rides. We will be kind of turning the herd over, if you will. We'll be kind of moving out some of the, the motorcycles that we currently have and uh, making room for some of the ones that, that are gonna come to us down the line. We have lots of projects in the queue. Right now we have little space. So we're gonna be turning over some motorcycles to make some room. Uh, other thing, free up some cash to be able to do this. This, I think, is very important to note. This is a self-funding hobby. And self-funding by means by there's motorcycle money that is used to buy other motorcycles, motorcycle parts. So this thing has to kind of fund itself, has to feed itself. And uh, so we'll be moving some motorcycles through to one to help us fund that, to keep the kind of machine rolling. Uh, plus... I have some that I really love that I'm really not riding. And that to me is kind of the worst thing you can do to them is just have them and just, it's like, uh, it's like a zoo, right? I need these things to be free range. I need these things to be out riding. And you get to a point to where you have too many and you're not riding them. So I'm going to thin the herd down so I can get to some builds. This happens every couple of years. I end up with 25 motorcycles and I got to get down to like six so I can get up to a bunch of motorcycles again. And that's kind of what happens. And that's what's going to continue to happen. So we're going to be thinning the herd in the next couple of months so we can make room for other projects that are coming through. But we've got great plans. Our big plan, our big goal for 2024 is uh, we're at 7,000. 657 8 right now at the time of recording this i would love to hit a hundred thousand subscribers by december 31st 2024 i said it i said it it's out there it's in the world that's what's going to happen i don't see why not why can't we do it if, if it continues to grow exponential rate that it's growing at now we should be able to get to the point that that where I, I think math fits, and I think we'll get to that point. With some things that we have planned, I think we'll, we'll see some, some peaks on that. So that's where that is, uh, which is incredible. That's the huge goal, and I can't, I can't even have that goal without you guys sitting here watching these videos, which I am truly astounded that uh, people watch these videos, and I appreciate it. I, I'm grateful to each and every one of you guys who do it, and for to come back for your comments, for everything. I love it. It helps me because it helps keep me accountable and keep me doing the thing I really enjoy doing. So guys, thanks again uh, from everybody at Motorcycle Rewind, which is just me. And for all of us at Motorcycle Rewind and my wife and Jackson, uh, my kids, this these amazing motorcycles that we get to share with you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Have a happy, healthy new year, and I hope you hit all of your goals for 2024. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day.